Beard's looking a little burly. Hey guys, Dr. Brad Boldle here. Now I'm not sure if everyone would agree with me, but struggling with our digestion can be one of the worst things associated with a hypothyroid diagnosis. Whether it's reflux, bloating, gas production, changes in bowel movements, or just downright pain, when our stomach isn't feeling good, nothing is fun or easy to do. That's why in today's video, I'm gonna give you three natural strategies that you can consider and try if you're looking to improve your overall gut health and quality of your life. So to get started, our first strategy is going to be assessing food sensitivities. It's very common that when we talk about nutrition and food in general, that a lot of people are advocating for this idea of moderation. It's okay to have anything in your diet as long as you're not having too much. While this can be a decent strategy for some people, when we have hypothyroidism, it changes the way that we need to approach things. Because of the decrease in available thyroid hormone and the associated inflammation that goes along with it, our body's tolerance for things in our environment, including the food we eat, tends to decrease as well. This leads to certain foods not being a good fit for our system. And when we're exposed to them, it can lead to irritation and damage. The thing is, because this response is regulated by our gut and immune system, it's less about the amount of food that we're eating and it's more about the exposure. And like we said before, the fit that it has with our body. So if you're having a food that doesn't react well with you, even if you're following that principle of moderation and only having a small amount, if you're having it on a frequent enough basis, it can still cause you issues and perpetuate your gut symptoms. Now, different people are going to react differently to different foods. And just because a food doesn't work well for your friend doesn't mean that it's a problem for you and vice versa. So don't necessarily think about foods as good or bad, rather think about foods on a spectrum where certain foods are going to have a higher likelihood of causing issues for people with hypothyroidism and certain foods are going to have a lower likelihood. But the key is, you're going to need to adjust where you're at on that spectrum based on your health history, how sensitive your body is, and how you're responding to some of your initial changes. To give you a more detailed explanation so you can actually implement some of these strategies, here's how I work through this food spectrum with my patients. If we're just getting started, then I like people to move towards more of a whole foods diet where they're preparing most of their meals, they know what ingredients are in their food, and we're limiting things like added sugars and refined oils. If those changes provide us some benefit, but we still need some additional help, then we simply move down the spectrum and remove other potential triggers. Our first stop is going to be assessing and potentially removing gluten and dairy. From there, we might look at removing gluten-free grains and legumes, including soy. Finally, if we're continuing to have gut symptoms and we think that food sensitivities might be at play, then we can look at removing some of the less common food triggers. This includes nuts and seeds, nightshade vegetables, and eggs. But before we move on to our next strategy, there's a couple quick points that I wanna make. Oftentimes, people are quick to panic when they hear all of those potential food triggers. But remember, I'm not saying that all of them are going to be a problem for you. I just want you to be aware of them and understand that they do tend to cause more issues for people with hypothyroidism. And by being aware of that possibility, you can then make changes as needed. Some people do have very significant gut symptoms and they're directly tied to the foods that they're eating. Although it can sound harsh to pull a lot of those food groups out, that kind of reset is sometimes what is needed and it allows us to get back on the path to healing. Again, not for everyone, but it is an option that's available to us. And the other thing that I wanted to bring up is that if you do have significant gut symptoms and you respond very favorably to your initial changes, so let's say that you heard about the connection between gluten and our thyroid and going gluten-free made a huge difference for you and reduced a number of symptoms, then that's a strong indicator that these food sensitivities could be heavily tied to how you're feeling. Therefore, if you had that initial positive response, but there's still some lingering symptoms that you wanna see addressed, then I would strongly consider moving down that spectrum and seeing what other foods are at play. So maybe it's the synergistic effect of not only going gluten-free, but also going dairy-free that really helps you to improve. However, 
If you've made some nutritional changes and the response has been kind of meh, then we might wanna look at different ways to support you. You guys know that I strongly believe in nutrition being able to support just about anything, but it doesn't help with everything. And if changing a few foods has only had a limited effect, then I don't always find further restriction being the best option for us. In fact, there's been many times where I've actually had patients relax their nutritional approach and instead start looking at things like stress, sleep, and other environmental toxins or chemicals. But on to our second strategy, which is assessing your fiber intake and tolerance. Now we've talked before about how one of the go-to recommendations to help anyone with any kind of gut symptom is to increase their fiber intake. But as we've also talked about, the research on increasing fiber is a little bit mixed. And anyone who's actually tried to increase their fiber to help out with gut symptoms and hasn't seen results knows that it isn't the perfect solution for all situations. I usually look at this two ways. If you're someone who eats a very refined and processed diet, then yeah, your fiber intake is going to be pretty low. As we talked about in the last section, moving towards more of that whole foods approach is going to instantly up your fiber and that might be exactly what you need. But if you're already nailing your nutrition and you're still having a lot of bloating, gas, and changes in bowel movements, then we might wanna consider that you could be getting too much fiber or maybe not getting the right kind. Here, we also have two options. Either we can reduce the overall amount of fiber in our diet by decreasing the amount of plant foods that we're consuming and increasing our fat and protein. If that doesn't sound like a good fit to you, or you know you do better with certain types of fibers, then we could look at doing more of a low FODMAP approach. FODMAPs are a type of fiber that include short chain compounds that are more easily fermentable by our gut microbiome and therefore produce more gas. It's this gas that can cause a number of different symptoms and really be troublesome for people who are sensitive. To help, we can reduce or avoid the foods that have higher amounts of FODMAPs and instead focus on long chain fiber. Again, this is something that we could take care of primarily through our food choices, but if we do want to supplement, choosing things like psyllium husk or pectin tend to be well tolerated. But as we said, fiber isn't the be all end all when it comes to addressing gut symptoms, and you can dial it up or down depending on how it makes your body feel. But I hope you're enjoying the info so far, and I just want to give you a quick reminder that if you want to continue to learn about natural strategies to support your Hashimoto's and hypothyroid symptoms, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you're notified when I post videos on Thursday mornings. And if you do like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up. But on to our final strategy, which is to make sure to support the chemical aspect of the digestive process. So you know how we talked before about how certain foods may or may not be a good fit for your body? Well, that decision-making process by your immune system, the tolerance of your immune system, often comes down to its ability to understand what it's looking at. For example, if my friend shows up at the front door and I can easily see it's him, then it's a simple decision to give him a wave and let him in the door. But maybe it's really rainy out and he has a jacket and sweatshirt on and he's all bundled up. Then in that scenario, I might be a little bit more hesitant and I'd want to double check that it was him at the door. Our immune system is the same way. And if it's not really sure what it's dealing with, then it's more likely to react in a defensive or negative way. One of the things that can really make this hard on our immune system and gut is if we don't break down our food properly. And even if it's a food that we normally tolerate, if we're not breaking it down into its simple component parts, then it's going to be much harder for our system to handle. At the same time, we have to recognize that hypothyroidism puts us in a position to not do this job efficiently. When we have low thyroid function, we have a decrease in metabolism, and that includes our ability to produce proper amounts of stomach acid and digestive enzymes. Ever feel like you eat something and it just sits like a brick in your chest? Or maybe you eat something and you're kind of burping it up for the rest of the day and evening? This might make you think that that food isn't a good fit for you, but it's more likely an issue with your ability to break that food down. To help with this, I always like to start by supporting the acidic environment. 
While it's true, some people may have issues breaking down carbohydrates because of changes in pancreatic enzymes, or breaking down fats because they have changes in bile function. However, all of those steps are secondary to having a proper acidic environment in our stomach. So if we can get that handled first, then most of the time it'll address any issues that we are having in the stomach with low acid, and those other factors will start to fall into place. The easiest way to do this, as long as you don't have any issues with fermented foods or histamine, is by adding one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar to about six ounces of water and consuming that before your meals. You can also do this by using a digestive enzyme product, but apple cider vinegar tends to be something that's relatively easy to implement and most people have it available at their homes. However, if you do decide to go the supplement route, keep in mind that not all digestive enzymes are created equal. And that doesn't necessarily mean that some are good or bad, although that does tend to be the case. Oftentimes it means that the difference in formulation may or may not be a good fit for what you're trying to achieve. Since I like to support that acidic environment in the stomach and that acidic signal, I like to make sure that people are choosing options that include betaine HCL. Of course, if that causes any burning or reflux and it's something that we need to avoid, we can always choose other options. We can look to support our pancreas and pancreatic enzymes by looking for a product that includes protease, lipase, and amylase, or we can support our gallbladder and fat breakdown with things like milk thistle, dandelion extract, and ox bile. But do be aware that ox bile isn't something that's tolerated by everyone. But with those things in mind, you can review different products, mix and match to your liking, and come up with a really solid combination that addresses your gut symptoms in an effective manner. But let me know what you think in the comments. Do you struggle with gut symptoms as part of your hypothyroid diagnosis? And what has made the biggest impact for you? Feel free to share your thoughts, and of course, let me know if you have any questions. If you like this information, but know that you need to work with someone who can cut through all the noise, create a specific plan for your body that you can follow and allows you to start healing, and you'd like to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, then you can send me an email at contact at seattlethyroidhelp.com, and once we receive your message, my staff will reach out and determine whether or not you qualify for a free consultation, and if so, help you to get scheduled. Of course, if you'd rather continue to make changes on your own, then make sure to check out some of my other videos on gut healing and also my free download and food list that I use for many of my patients with Hashimoto's and hypothyroidism, which you can find in the description below. But that's all for this week's video. Thanks so much for hanging out with me and as always, wishing you continued improvement and success with your health. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell for notifications. If you're looking for daily information on ways to support your thyroid healing, then you can also follow me on Instagram or Facebook. Links for that are down below. But my name is Dr. Brad Bodel. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and I'll see you in the next one.